uh, of the cultural nature. Mm -hmm. Then we also have the, because Washington is the headquarters of the Bretton Woods institutions, that is the World Bank and the IMF. So we also have, we take care of the interests of our, our countries in securing concessional loans as well as grants for the development of Uganda. And we have uh, a good relationship with the World Bank and the IMF. Then the other strategic objectives are promoting the image of Uganda, diplomacy. Mm -hmm. In you, you know your country, but those outside don't know about your country. <coughs> so one of our objectives to, to, to promote the image of Uganda, to tell the truth about Uganda, how we govern ourselves, how we manage ourselves, and the good land. Mm -hmm. And where there are some challenges, I uh, work with our hosts to see how they can to make a better image of the country. Then the other strategic objective is, uh, is to mobilize the diaspora to participate in the economic and in the economic in the economic development of you of Uganda. You know the diaspora all over the world to the economy of Uganda. In the statistics we have for two thousand and nineteen of twenty twenty two thousand twenty they will come on board, but you know those years have been affected by the pandemic. But the authentic statistics we had those of 2019, mm -hmm. and uh, Uganda received 1.4 billion US dollars in remittances from the diaspora. And that's, uh, that's quite sizable. This is us to a solid account. It was sent to their relatives, to some institutions, of, uh, and it, account, it amounts to that. Nobody controls it, no government doesn't control it. It contributes a lot because if the who is supporting uh, relatives in Swiss mm -hmm. or he pays money for their hospital, uh, these are these are matters these are uh, addressed. Yes, and this person comes in them to be of crucial importance to the world. But we want to scale that because the diaspora and other folk, the majority of the folks in Uganda, they are to these big economies mm -hmm. able give them jobs, those jobs they are able to have disposable income. Oh yes. Mm -hmm. So if they can save and help their relatives, but as government, we are also them as a bigger asset in terms of rising resources for Practical development. Yes, 
investors. Here we are looking for investors. We are looking for tourists. We are we, we, we are looking for markets. Now diaspora can be a very big vehicle for supporting these this this this, pro, this program these programs. And uh, <coughs> one of the things we are telling them is that they should learn uh, when they are here in America, they are exposed to the American economic culture of corporate America. Uh, what you see here in America mm. is mainly by individuals combining efforts to do them. Mm. So, if the diaspora from Uganda can join uh, uh, in, in areas of equity, they can raise a lot of money that can do some investments in Uganda. And of course, already there is uh, there are examples. All right. Yes, the examples. There are many who have been doing it. I, I was in Uganda over Christmas, and I, I, I had a friend who lives here. He took me to his hotel. We had lunch there. It is a magnificent hotel in Kisasi. Wow. Uh, now, if he can do that, others... Other, other, others can also do it. They can even do bigger things. And we are trying to sell to them the models of Ethiopia and Kenya. In Ethiopia, the government deliberately allocates land to the diaspora. Oh. They say this is an industrial area for the diaspora. Do make yourselves into co co formations or even individually and do something. Do something. Here. And when you go to Addis Ababa, you'll find that industrial area of the diaspora who have set up various industries. Mm -hmm. And it is working. Mm -hmm. They have also allocated them. Uh, areas where they can put up uh, estates. And when you go there, you'll find them there. They are there. I worked there. Mm -hmm. Same with Kenya. In Kenya, the counties have also seen this as a great resource. They allocate them big areas and say, in this area, we have planned to put hotels, schools, shopping malls, uh, housing estates. You come and do it. And they have done it. Uh, many of our diaspora have been cheated, for example, by relatives. Built for me a house. The person goes, the house is not there. Mm. Yeah, but through these schemes, people are able to acquire the houses they want. Mm. Very, very, very efficiently mm. and very simply. In Kenya, uh, and I've been reading some of them, there's a lady who was there who said, I had never known that I would own I also buy room. But somehow, this project came. Now I have a house. And, and I said, what do you do with the house? You are not there. He said, no, we are renting it. And that scheme is managing the rentals. Wow. Uh, they have it in, 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 in about, I have known about five counties where they have those kind of schemes. They have appointed accountants, managers, full time. They have offices, they have lawyers, and they are all on those projects, and it is paying 
those who are investing in it and those who are working in it. Wow. So this is what we are we are trying to tell the Ugandan diaspora. Recently when I was in Uganda, I was able to land on a team of young lawyers who have set up uh, uh, chambers, but beyond 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 uh, beyond uh, the law service, they are also going into equities, property management, mm. and uh, we sat with them. They are the ones who actually called me. They said, we have this proposal. We know it has worked in Kenya. Can you tell the diaspora so that we can be their bridge to, doing to do something like that? Mm. Now we are, we, I came with a proposal, shared it with my staff, and uh, we are in the process of telling the diaspora through their configurations. Here we name the, the big configuration is UNA, Uganda North America Association. But they have also got chapters. And we want to tell them not to take what we are telling them, but to call those people so that they can interact with them and see how they can move forward yes, sir. with this idea. Mm. I talked at length on this matter because it is a sure deal. It is working in Ethiopia, it is working in Kenya, it is working in Eritrea. So that is one of our strategic objectives. Mm -hmm. uh, the other strategic objective is uh, provision of uh, consular services. Mm. Uh, in America, we estimate that there are over 150,000 Ugandans. That is estimate. Now, now, these Ugandans are of different categories. You have Ugandans that have become Americans. <laughs> yes. They are Americans. But you come to America, home is home. True. True. Your parents are in Uganda, your ancestors are in Uganda. So they are Americans, but the heart is is at home. Yeah, home is home. And they are there. They go to Uganda, they come, they do that. So that is one category. Then there is another category of those who are here with on green cards, meaning that they have permission to work, but while they remain in Uganda. Mm. Okay. So those are one, one other category. Then you have students. Then you have others who have no status. <laughs> and now those ones, of course, we don't encourage them to come in the U.S. Mm. In, that, in that category. But they are here but, anyway. But they are here. And uh, there's something. So we meet all these people mm. and encourage them to, to as, as they pay for their bills, because here in the US the bills are big, they should also know that they have to put something back home. Yeah. And, 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 and they can. So that is a big number. It means that they want access to consular services. They need passports, because passports do expire. They also need national identity cards. You know the importance of a Ugandan national identity card. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That one, you, 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 you to transact anything in Uganda, you must have. You must have that. So we have that service here. Those who are Americans, they need visas to go to Uganda from time to time. So we provide the visas. Here. So those consular services put together and be a us to this Ugandan diaspora. There is something they get from us, and there is something we want to get from them. 
for the good of our country. So that is a, a strategic objective that we do. We have machines here for capturing biometric data for those applying for national identity cards. Wow, that's good. We cool. work with the mirror. And, uh, and the system is working very well. So someone doesn't need to go back to Uganda to apply for... No, no, he comes here. Right here. Are here. Well, that's good. Yes. That's good. That's good. Now, the passports, we used to issue passports. Uh, it was Washington, uh, Pretoria, and London. Mm. We, we had machines. In fact, the machines are still here. We were issuing, we were processing passports. But uh, over time, the system changed. Now we, are, we, we, we refer the passports to Uganda. But biometric, biomet capture biometric data, uh, there, is, uh, there are machines that have been sent here, and these installations will be done, I think, this month. We are expecting a team from immigration. The machines have already come. We have already cleared them with customs. They are going to be installed. So that somebody does not need to travel from here to Uganda to capture his biometric data for passport. And we are also encouraging our government in Kampala that these systems should be able to talk to each other. We have a system for national identity card. We, have a, we, we, now, we will have a system for, 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 for passports, if they can talk to each other, so that work is more, uh, more, more streamlined. So, those are services which the diaspora require, and we provide them. From time to time you have challenges, but we, 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 have, uh, we have a strong team that is able to deal with the questions and the queries as they are arisen. Yes, sir. The other strategic objective is that Uganda is not in isolation back home. We, we are in a region. We are in a region. And, uh, for us to move uh, faster, or even to make sense in what we are doing, we cannot do it alone. We have to do it with others. That's why Uganda has a, a robust policy on regional economic, uh, 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 regional, regional economic integration and regional political cooperation so that cha with challenges like peace and security we work with the larger region to get solutions mm. issues to do with the economy we work with the larger region to integrate and make streamlined operations. That's why we are in the East African community. That's why we are in IGAD, African Union, so that these things are streamlined. Now, that, when you connect it with America, uh, we have a, a, a robust program with America, because they are also interested in these things being termed before they reach America. Mm -hmm. If it is insecurity, insecurity, they need it to be addressed at the source. Yes, before, this before it comes right now. Yes. So we do cooperate with America very closely on the fight against terrorism, as well as on the promotion of regional peace and security. Mm -hmm. yeah. We also cooperate with them in the area of regional integration. So that is one of the things we, 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 hope we, 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 we promote. Lastly, uh, international law. Uh, not that we are the guarantors of law, 
<laughs> but when dealing with America, we are interested that all of our countries operate within the purview of international law. Yes. Because that is the best way you can you can you can be assured of tomorrow that if something happens then the solution is is is, is in, in in the agreements we have mm -hmm. at the regional and international levels. So those are the strategic programs we have as embassy. These are things we promote and uh, we, 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 we hope that uh, we are able to operate at, uh, at 100 percent, but we were affected by coronavirus, uh, greatly affected. At the time, 19, 2019, our, our, our tourism, tourists tourism from America to Uganda are not very many. 2016, they were numbering around 50,000 a year. In the, by 2019, we had reached 90,000, meaning that our programs were actually pulling more Americans to the tourism of Uganda. And uh, we have been able to do this with uh, the help of, 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 of promotional companies. Uh, we, had, we, had, we have had promotional companies that we work with so that we have more tourists going to you Uganda. Can. The more you have, the more you earn. Mm, mm. uh, 90,000 was not... Uh, a plausible figure, but the growth is the most important. And mm. we hope that uh, when Corona goes down, this growth will continue to climb. Mm. Yes. If you've just joined us, I'm just having a moment with uh, Ambassador Katende, who is the Ambassador of Uganda to Washington. And of course, this talk, I know that is beneficial to all of you that are watching us right here on national television. Uh, Ambassador, I want you to, uh, I want to just pick up something from, uh, uh, you said we have, uh, uh, you help people to go back to come to Uganda, they get visas from Uganda, uh, Americans who want to come and visit. Um, I, I just want you to throw more light uh, on uh, uh, something that I think it's very uh, uh, serious. Uh, Ugandans, when they are coming to United States of America, they get visas, uh, they cannot get visas from the port of entry. Mm -hmm. uh, but Americans can get visas from port of entry. Mm -hmm. uh, why, why is that? Uh, uh, that one has changed. Okay. Uh, before, we had a flexible system where someone could go and get a visa at Entebbe. But that has changed. We have made it better by requiring that people apply and pay for their visas online. Very, because if, if you go to Entebbe, you have, no, you, you have to go through the application. People are spending there about 30 minutes to 60 minutes. But now you get your visa online, you go, you do the same question, you go. So you don't waste any more time. So that system of uh, getting visas from the airport ended. It is now online application and it is more streamlined and easier for applicants. Uh, more to that, why do we, um, the Ugandans pay $160 to get a visa, to come here for a visit? Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, for a visit to Uganda from America is $50. Mm -hmm. It's not balancing. Well, it's, it's not supposed to balance. It's not fair. <laughs> no. it's, it's just not fair. Well, look, each country has got its regimes. Yes. Uh, you have your own 
vis a regime. You sit down and say, we want Americans to. Because normally the visa is not a favor. It's not a favor. Mm. It is something that uh, you provide so that you, 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 you get visitors. Mm. If you, you st pe because people will always visit. Uh, and uh, because they visit, you, you, you calculate. Maybe the cost we put in is not as much as the cost they put in. In any case, this cannot be a balancing act. Otherwise, you will say, why is America uh, so rich and we are poor? <laughs> this is not fair. <laughs> uh, I think for, okay, for us there is, uh, there is, uh, I, I, I don't want to delve into the rationale, but I know that thing had happened before, that our visa was cheap. Yeah. And uh, we increased it to 100. Okay. And then there was a backlash. And then we sat down and said, now, look, at 50, we were getting 0.8 million people. Now, at 100, we are getting 0.6 million. So what is happening? And a lot of permutations were made. Mm -hmm. And it was decided that we are better off pegging the fee at 50. Uh. Because who wants the other one more? Do we want Americans more or they want us more? It's going to be 50-50, man. Uh -uh. I know. <laughs> it's going to be 50-50 here. If, 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 if all these Ugandans were to go, <laughs> Because you see, in economics, there are certain certain products that you don't try to juggle with. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If there is a product that has a, a substitute, you will go and there will be a substitute. If it is about the people who come here, to do certain jobs, and they don't come, uh, uh, Mexico will bring more. Hmm? Mm, mm. Uh, uh, Malaysia will bring more. So you are substitutable. You understand? Mm, mm. Uh, so, as to who needs the other one more, maybe we need them more because this is a very large economy. The U.S., if you are a country out there, you, you, you have to, to strive to have some, some small piece from the U.S. Because it's a large economy. Yes, yes. You have large disposable income. And so whatever you want to sell, you should be able to sell. Maybe one thing which Ugandans may need to know now that I have come to that point, yes. The, there is there is here a preferential treatment by the U.S. to Africa, called AGOA, African Opportunity Growth and Opportunity Act. Mm. Under that law, Africa is entitled to export uh, 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 products. Uh, of tariff lines of more than 6,000, mm. duty-free. Okay. Duty-free. Now, for Uganda, initially we are doing very well. We are bringing here textiles, we are bringing here fish, eh, catfish. Uh, it's, uh, the, 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 these uh, slates of fish. But our trade has been going down because our people 
have failed to appreciate the requirements of the American market. Uh, the American market is a very choosy market. So many products come here, but they come here under standards. You must fulfill the standards yesterday, today, tomorrow. Or worse, yes, standard. Uh, they, they must be. I always give the example of this lady who had got a niche. She was producing gloves. Uh, these gloves were kitchen gloves. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. You just get a cotton cloth, put tailor gloves. Mm -hmm. As if as that. She had got that to supply Walmart. Uh, mm -hmm. And she was, normally they give you, uh, first of all, they give you some, 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 some ladders, as we call it. Yeah, shelf space. Yes, yeah, shelf space. That here is your shelf space. Every month, fill it. She did it six months. The, 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 the gloves that were of this size became smaller. Started shrinking. <laughs> the stitches okay. that were double became one. one. Okay. The colors that were agreed were now mixed up. Oh, man. And they said, ah, you will not be able. Now, why did she allow herself to fail? Because once you get that, you go to any bank, any bank will give you money to sustain the business. Once they know that you already have that, they know that the sure market, mm -hmm. they will give you money. So why did she fail to conform to the standards? Oh my. And once that is done, then it's done. So my appeal to Ugandans is that they should, those who want to export to the United States, the Americans have put down, are put up, are put in place what they call deal teams, deal teams at their embassies, where an exporter can go and get information. Uh, here, information changes. Those standards, I tell you, they, they keep changing. All the time. Uh, they keep changing. So you must be up to date. Once you get into the feeds where this takes place, you will know. And if you are an exporter to the U.S., you are always on your tender course. Mm, mm. Uh, but the market is there. Our Ugandans should approach those deals. If you want to send here textiles, textile, I mean simple, <laughs> simple, even if it is, uh, it is uh, t-shirts, we do them, uh, but do them according to the standard. The standard. And if you have any doubt, go to those uh, 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 deal te teams in Kampala, they will tell you what to do. Otherwise, the market is here, is there. Mm. For many things, there is nothing like there is no market. It is there. The problem is the supply side. You've actually answered uh, one of the questions that I had. Uh, the, where can people get information on what uh, to bring? But you've just answered it correctly. The deal tunes are right at the embassy of uh, the yes. United States. Of we also send so. information, but those are the... At least it is theirs. They, 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 they know. But, but, but Ambassador, what during your reign of ambassadorship, mm. what are those things that uh, the Americans or the American market is interested in? And, and just from uh, your mouth here on national television, let us just get to know so that someone out there may pick a point and say, hey, they're interested in mangoes. They're interested in this. What are those things that you've seen that the Americans are interested in? Now, I have told you, this is a large market the largest market in the world. Virtually everything sells here. Everything. Even if it means grasshoppers, ants, whatever, they sell here. 
All you need to know is once you get that chance, uh, because some people will say, okay, you are able to supply, okay, supply. You should be able to supply uh, consistently. With the right standard. Uh -huh. That's very important. Everything, say, you go to, <coughs> have you, when you are here, you can even go to African shops. Eh? We have where we, Africans buy food. Mm. Eh, you'll find there all the food of Africa. Okay. Countries like Cameroon are doing it. Eh, are, are doing it. So it's, it, it, it's possible, it's workable. My problem with the, the Ugandan business operators is this lack of consistency. I'm, we are here. Eh? When I go back to Uganda, and I want to go to the shop where I bought a certain shoe. When I go there, I find paper. I do not. I will not find the shoes. I find other products. I don't know whether you know. Mm, it. Mm, mm, uh, mm. Someone and I asked somebody. He said, uh -uh. because people procure things from. China or Dubai, he will go to buy jeans. As he moves in Dubai, he saw that he gets to know that cassettes are more. <laughs> then he yes, buys seller. cassettes. Yes. yes. He comes, he says, Oh, we raise a jeans. Ah, ah, Katina raise a cassette. Changed. We, 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 this business culture is not good. It's not good. Uh, and that is exactly why we, 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 we don't do consistent things. Mm. Uh, mm -hmm. And Indians should be our best uh, 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 guiders because Indian, there is a way they do their business mm. Mm. with mm. consistency. Yes. And, 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 and they move on. I think that is one of the things. I was ambassador to Sudan. And we, we got very good business in Sudan. In fact, 2005, uh, His Excellency the President gave me a gold medal, best ambassador of the year, 2005. Yes, sir. Because our trade with Sudan went up to $700 million, from zero to $700 million. Wow, wow. Uh, but how are we doing business? I used to go to Juba. A, a truck, hmm? you see these trucks which get cabbages from Kawale, go to Owino? They were like that in Juba, offloading cabbages. I said, but at least let's have decency. This is another kind. Can't we package these things properly? Eh? Read all the way from Kabali. Package them properly. And then they should have an appeal. All these pineapples, one after the other. So we had those battles with, this, with, the, with the traders. Eh? That culture of packaging we have to incarcate it. In, in fact, the Ministry of, 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 of Trade has a very big role to play. Look at it even inside the country. Go to Owino, go to Nakasero. In Owino, you'll find beans with the stones all mixed up. Eh? You buy, you go, then you start. The job that should have been left at the villages is now in your house. They are removing stones. Why, why can't we have a system where you buy the beans from the farmers in their 
good state, you know, so that you, you, you know, you, you don't bring the jobs from the, you take the jobs that should have been at the village level, you bring them in Kampala. So what do you have? You have all these people coming to, to Kampala to sort, you know, beans. I think that is the, the that is the essence. Mm. The trade states there before it comes to America. So the, that is my. If there is anything that this interview has meant, that's my biggest message to my government and to my people in Uganda. Wow, that's that's, that's a point cool. home. Uh, but also, I want I want you to uh, throw more light. I don't know what is the criteria of uh, you allowing someone who is an investor from uh, USA to come to Uganda. We have over time uh, seen people who are investors who have come to Uganda to invest, mm -hmm. uh, being evict evicted from houses. They cannot even pay rent. Mm -hmm. um, what is the criteria? Uh, does someone have to have so, so such kind of money and they leave it somewhere. How, how do you uh, tell that this is an investor real to come to Uganda? Well, okay, that is something which, uh, which you cannot sort out here. Uh, you can identify somebody, encourage him to go to Uganda. He goes to Uganda. Uh, we have Uganda Investment Authority. They know what they look they look for and uh, and uh, you hope that you have a right investor but it is also true that the world has become small in this quest for investors you have also these fake people who come in uh, so the challenge is how do you remove these fake people from the genuine people. Okay. That is something okay. which UIA has to do. Uh, here, we can also, before we, 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 we can recommend you, we would have done our, our assessment, uh, your assessment uh, here. But you never know, things go through. Uh. Uh, so, so that is the, the, the world is fake. There is a lot of fakeness in the world. Yeah. It is our responsibility to remove the sh the shaft from the from the, the cleaning staff. And 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 I know our time is far spent, but at least I have two things that I need you to throw more light on. Number one, uh, we are hearing a lot of stories right from here, uh, of course, on social media and stuff like that. That the government of America has pulled off from supporting uh, things in, um, in Uganda, like uh, health, um, you know, education and stuff like that, that the government of uh, USA was involved in. Please throw more light on that and let us know what is that, those areas that the government of USA is in support? Uh, because one thing that I know that my country and my president has really embarked on is peace and stability, safety. Uh, and not only in, in Uganda, but uh, uh, on all over uh, each country of uh, Africa, he has a hand in safety. But when we hear uh, that and when I, when I say we, I'm talking about the social media, the vibe that comes from USA. Uh, you know, please throw more light on that. No, you you are you are right. You are right. We have situations. We have challenges going on uh, under that pillar of uh, public diplomacy and enhancement of Uganda's image. We, we we have been trying to to work with uh, with our hosts here. Now, the background is very simple. Uh, one of the things where we have been cooperating with the U.S. are three things. <coughs> uh, one. Uh, democracy. Yes. Two, governance. Mm. Three, human rights. 
Uh, we have been working with them very well on those issues mm. because they have also been supporting us to be better, a better country. Democracy is something that uh, is, 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 is something that we were not born with and we have been making it better, better and better. But in the process, maybe the message, the, the understanding is not appreciated. Mm. So, when we had uh, our elections, uh, we did have those elections during a pandemic. And uh, that called for certain measures on how those elections would be handled. Indeed, it is even good that the Americans themselves had the elections during the same time. And they know what we were going through. Mm. Now, in the case of Uganda, with the choice was, there were, there were two choices. He said, either you go ahead with the elections or you postpone them because of this pandemic. And the choice of the country was, no, let us go ahead with the elections and manage them in accordance with the SOPs. SOPs. That was the decision. Mm -hmm. And those SOPs were communicated to all the political parties mm. that this is how you are going to conduct your campaigns. Yes. This is how you are going to to conduct the election themselves. Mm. For the first time, I saw our president with very few people just addressing the, the, the what? The, the, the leaders. Mm -hmm. yeah, for, for the NRM, that's what they chose. But uh, in order to fulfill this, uh, the, 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 this social distancing during campaigns, let me go to the areas and meet with the leaders. Then the leaders can stay with the message and advance the campaign. That is what our president was doing. Now, what happened with the other parties? The other parties now misrepresented it. Mm. To say, uh uh, this is a way of gagging us. You know that you saw those skirmishes. Yes. Between uh, uh, NUP uh, and the police, between FDC and the police. Skirmishes always. Uh, because the security person, the security forces had the responsibility to fulfill the SOPs, to make sure that everybody conform. Mm -hmm. Because you can have elections, you can have your campaigns, but if you also contaminate them with this COVID, then it makes no sense. That's right. Uh, so, those skirmishes, that misunderstanding of the opposition political parties continued and everybody was seeing those skirmishes. Some of them were very ugly and so on, uh, leading to that uh, arrest in, in Luka, where now there was this uh, riot. And, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and uh, at the end of the day, over 50 people died. And the pictures were being shown, everybody saw, that the opposition, there is a policeman who they want, you saw that? Mm, mm. I mean, it, that determination was, a, was excessive. Uh, that was excessive. And uh, so, in the end, there was that collateral damage as a result of the defiance by the opposition parties. 
and it's somehow there were also some mistakes maybe by the security. Now, these are things that were picked by the Americans. And the Americans judged our elections to have been uh, rigged. Uh, and I have been explaining to them that you can talk about something else. Because in the Ugandan context, the most streamlined elections are Ugandan elections mm. because, and they are finished at the polling station. At the polling station, they, they, they open the box before you start voting. Is empty? Everybody says yes. We now start. You have a position, every, every part has a representative. A voter comes, he says, this is